Yes. Social media at workplace. Yeah, please. Yeah, office, office. Oh, all right. Okay. So, office, uh, I'm not sure if that. Office was use. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, okay. Secondly, I'd like to add uh, another qu uh, query as to like, uh, well, what is the definition of social media uh, in terms of like, which are the top three if we have to say, you know, should Facebook, Twitter, and uh, or like, what follows after Facebook and Twitter if some of the experts can guide us on that mm -hmm. as to like which are these uh, social media uh, platforms perhaps NGOs could focus should focus could focus okay uh, so I will reply uh, yours as well as the previous one uh, unless somebody else wants to take it up uh, this office thing is uh, you know is related to the performance where how much time you are uh, you are uh, doing social media can be a new culprit but earlier it was something else maybe just internet use you know there was a time when people used to say internet is not going to be used because there's a lot of office work because everybody is going on internet and checking email and all that. Now that has been taken into consideration that without email you can't work. Wait for a few months and one year and then you know social media will become part of the you know uh, I mean in my office at least it is not banned. We keep talking about how many people are on Facebook and I keep asking my techie guys that can you see the server uh, that how many people are logged in on Facebook and all that apart from the people who are on social media as a responsibility but uh, we don't feel that uh, we are very negatively impacted. I'm talking about uh, the um, I mean we are an NGO. Um, as far as the NGO sector is concerned, use of social media, uh, I don't know about the other, but I certainly feel that social uh, Facebook is is almost becoming a very very strong uh, you know inevitable uh, um, medium to adopt uh, because of various reasons. You want to sell products, you want to have customers, you want to talk about yourself. You can't afford a website. You can have a Facebook page. You know, if you don't want to invest, it's very easy to update. It's very easy to uh, you know tag and so on and so forth. Uh, so I would say that uh, you know it's it, it has become a platform where you would like to be there and have a response. Website usually do not have a response. You just upload it. So website is gradually becoming a database and uh, interactive platform is going to be these social media platforms whether it's Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Uh, Twitter I would say is much more uh, I would say it requires a huge uh, high level of writing power and press pressing power in the sense that you cannot write in 100, everybody cannot write in 140 characters uh, the message that you want to convey. So I think it's a very, uh, uh, we used to say that literature in a hurry is called journalism. I think now uh, Twitter is a journalism in a hurry is called Twitter, I guess. Uh, so, um, uh, that, that's the way it is going to be. But uh, there is no uh, concrete answer to your question, but I would say that it, it depends on uh, individual organization. Yeah. I can, okay, go ahead. Yes, yes, go ahead. Your voice is quite loud. Uh, in fact, companies can now uh, put this as an incentive, like you can use social media in our office. Office, can, office can give? As incentive, like uh, they can give incentives. HR can write in the appointment letter that you can use social media in our offices. Oh, wonderful, that's a good idea. Or for uh, incentive for not using also. And that will go into domestic, like Gautam was saying that in Bombay he keeps going to restaurant where the boy, boyfriend and girlfriend sitting in front of each other and basically chatting on each other, to each other on using the mobile rather than talking to each other. You know, so that's even, you are dating and then using your gadgets to talk to each other. Uh, just one second. Anubhuti, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just want to say, like, uh, taking his question wherein he said that, you know, the social media is banned in number of offices. Uh, as far as government sector is concerned, I mean, it's not like that because, uh, like, there is a guideline uh, for the government officers on, you know, the use of social media. But the only problem is that, you know, the people in the government sector also and in the private sector also, they are not sensitized, right? The people don't even know about that particular guideline. So that is something which we need to do. Like, we should share that particular thing that has been developed by DIT. And uh, that thing, that document is uh, there. But my concern is not like what we should be doing on Facebook or how, what sort of posts we should be having on Facebook. 
My concern is actually a security concern. Uh, we've been talking about Facebook a lot and posting a lot of you know, information up there. But I have a question to panelists. You know, how safe it is to share your data? Right, whatever you are writing, whatever you are posting, and especially like when the government, uh, the entire government sector, and you know all the ministries, they have their Facebook pages and all. So in a way, what we are doing, we are sharing a data with a one particular organization, which is called Facebook. So how how safe it is to share our data? Which means like when we talk about Google, also that concern is there. When we talk about Facebook, also that concern is there. So that is my. Uh, a concern, you know, as a government official and you know, the person who's working in a government sector. Thank you. Any comment? Can I take it? So I think this question is also related to the earlier one. Can you make the mic closer to your mouth? Hello? Yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, I don't know how many of you know that uh, latest, you know, the new CEO of Infosys, he realized that fundamentally they cannot ban social media. They can ban through the desktop or a laptop, but mobile access they cannot. So what he did was he said, you know, we cannot ban it, so social media is open. At the same time, what becomes very important is, which is your second question is, what you can share, what you cannot share. I think one thing we need to understand is, like any other medium, this is a medium which is going through that phase of evolution. So at a government level as well as at organizations level, building the entire social media policy framework is happening. I know especially if you look at large organizations like Dell, Intel, Cisco, G, all of them have very, very, you know, well-defined policies. Not that everyone is following that or every employee is aware of that, but I think that is definitely a trend that as part of your induction, social media policy of the organization is part of that in initial process. Second is, there are some official spokesperson at organizations so they definitely have that as part of their profile in terms of they mention that, in terms of that, you know, or they mention that these are my personal views, though I am the official spokesperson. But mm. uh, I think other than that, the risk of what, what you were talking about, security, platforms do give you all that control in terms of how much of uh, your network can see what of your messages. Like, you know, Facebook, you can completely control your or Twitter, you can have protected tweets that no one other than your follower can see that tweet. But I'm sure as we are evolving, even the earlier example of we talked about arrest and all of that, it's going to be part of evolution right now, or even future, it's not going to be that big a damage or a risk versus the benefits we are seeing. But I think a policy framework is one thing which is there, and the second aspect of you having full control on the platforms which already exist. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, uh, if, if, I think that's true with even, so I would, uh, let me give you an example of a gated society and ungated society. If you look at the gated society in the, in the country, and don't talk about Delhi, in the country, what is the percentage of people living in a gated society? Uh, and then you can t keep talking about security and securities and who takes care of my car, who t is there a gatekeeper or not, is there an entry or not. Whereas the 90% of the country lives in an ungated society absolutely either because of compulsion or because feeling absolutely secure, you know. <laughs> So I would say that it's just a reflection of the same thing. I, if I tell you that, okay, I'm feeling insecure, but can you get out of it? Can you, I mean, why don't you, I mean, the people, I would say everybody who say, even I would say in some forum that it's insecure or it is not secure and so on and so forth. Why don't we get ourselves out? And then there is a whole debate going on. Can we have a right to anonymity? Can we have a right to be forgotten? So for example, I write something and then I want to be forgotten on Facebook. So Facebook gives you a right as a matter of anonymity or of forgetfulness that they won't keep your data on them uh, selves to be uh, memorized in the hard disk or, or, or to be accessed by someone else. So those kind of things are evolving and coming up and it's only because of these kind of questions that, uh, you know, coming up that everything that I'm publishing uh, is secure. For example, I'm walking in, uh, I'm walking in social media. Am I secure? I'm walking in my lane. Do I ask the same question that am I secure or not to anybody else? If you feel unsecure, you will be at home. 
If there is some 144 there, you don't get out of house or something like that. Or you can't get, uh, you know, security. Every person cannot get a security assistance when while you are going out. Uh, if you are going to a tea party locally or a tea shop, you don't ask this question that are you secure or not secure. So it's the same lifestyle that is coming up here which is being replicated. Uh, I want to add a few things uh, about that office time, uh, using social media in the office, and that uh, which is the next social media after Facebook or Twitter. So basically, uh, uh, as for my, for my experience, most of the people, uh, let's, uh, let's say boss in the company, uh, uh, banned social media thinking like uh, employees are being inefficient and they are not like completing their work or maybe they have uh, too much bandwidth co uh, consumption or too much traffic uh, at the peak hour. So in our office, social media is not controlled, it's free, but we, we set a goal for every day, like uh, I, I own some project, then I, uh, I'm accountable for that project. So w we set the goals and we use social media side by side, but at, at the end of the day, we, we have to deliver the results. So I think that uh, uh, if we can do, if we can apply that kind of technique, like result-based or like goal-based, then I think social media is not a problem in the office as well. And about social media, which is the next, uh, I think, uh, it's based on the users, locations, and the like demand. Like you cannot say like Facebook is the top and like Twitter as a whole. Like we can say Facebook as a number, it's a top social media. But if you, if we are going to China, then you cannot say Facebook, right? You have to go to Weibo or some other other local uh, Chinese sites. So it depends on users and it depends on location. Like uh, and also I like to add that Google is the number one source engine in the world and YouTube is the second largest search engine. So that's it. Thank you. I think we had a uh, good uh, amount of discussion. You, oh, yeah. yeah, Jessica. And I was just going to add to that. I mean, there's a lot of talk about the privatization. and There are companies that are kind of coming up now, like Snapchat and WhatsApp, that are offering users more options on not storing the data. So those are other avenues that are up and coming. Um, apps and social media platforms to look at because at the end of the day it's just a tool. All of these are platforms and tools so you want to go out and talk to your users and find out what they're using or even help them develop their own methods to communicate with each other. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this is almost 11.35. Uh, we are going to reorganize our timing. Uh, let's come back at 12 o'clock and rather than going parallel, uh, our people are saying that we should do all the session here itself and uh, have the, all the presentations so that everybody uh, goes through those uh, finalists.